This guy's got some weight to him. Ooh, that's a beauty. Now that's a flounder. We're gonna make an apple and corn stuffed flounder and we're gonna serve this over a parsnip puree. One of my favorites. We did some inshore fishing yesterday, like inshore meaning close here. I'm gonna start there, see how it is, and then I got some stuff like a few miles out, we'll go fish if that's not working out for us. I got a bunch of different color grubs we'll play around with too. Like neon, like green was working the other day, it's weird, certain colors work. Just enough breeze to push us along here. Oh, I basically like to let it sit on the bottom bounce it two or three times and let it sit again, bounce it two or three times and let it sit again. Some mornings they're hitting it hard. They'll, they'll crush it and you, you don't have to do much. Sometimes they're just, they're just sucking on it, almost sitting on the bait. Yeah. They kind of got, they'll, they'll drop it sometimes and you drop back, they'll pick it up, they'll drop back. If you miss them, drop it right back. They always come back, yeah. you know? 90% of the time they'll come back, hit it again. And after they hit it two or three times, it's almost like you got to rebait. Oh, there's a flounder. Well, welcome back to season two of Living Off the Land and Sea. Today we are out in Cape Cod Bay with Bad Dog Charters and we're catching winter flounder. Um, these fish are kind of special for me. This is kind of what started my passion for saltwater fishing when I was a kid. These fish were super abundant back in their early 80s. But they've sort of fallen on hard times, but one place where there still remains a very healthy population is in Cape Cod Bay. And right now we are in late May. Oh, Chris got another nice one behind us here. We're trailing them pretty good right now. And it's great to see such an abundance of these fish in these waters. Super good eating, one of my favorite inshore ground fish to eat and we're racking them up pretty good. We're off to a good start. That's a flounder. So we first started fishing with Mike three years ago. We filmed an episode of On the Water TV with him. I think that was actually back during the pandemic. And we had so much fun that we've been booking a trip every year with him, with different guys from the office. Today we got Chris Meegan, the boss man. We got Matt Hefner from editorial. Oh, who might have a flounder. No. <laughs> I should have known better. We have Matt Ryan. And it's just really good fun fishing, no pressure, unless you're Matt. Really just fun fishing. It's uh, kind of takes me back to my childhood catching these things. And they're not great fighting, but they're certainly great eating. Okay, so we have a pretty simple bottom fishing rig here. Uh, two hooks, we get some little curly tail grubs on there. And we get two different kinds of bait. We're using surf clams, I have that in the top hook. And we're using mud mussels on the bottom hook. And so far today, it seems like they're really going after the mussel, but that could also be just because it's on the second hook. And that's what's closest to them. Just thread that on and send it down. I think like right around this time period, they're just starting to get really thick and fat, you know? So you're getting a lot of heavier ones now yeah. instead of the springtime skinny ones, you know? In the springtime, we get a lot of smaller ones that are all like the meat soft on them, you know? Yeah. They're just, they're just coming out Spawning. Of the yeah, they just spawned. They're not eating very well yet. Right up and in. Yep. That's oh, that's a nice one. oh, that's a beauty. That's a beautiful flounder. Yeah, hold on. It's a flounder. Getting head shakes. Yeah, two. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. All right, let's get this guy in there. Sweet. 
Oh, nice one. Oh, Quality. Oh, it's a whopper. Quality. <laughs> that is a thing of beauty. Look at these cookie cutters. They are. They're identical. And it's amazing how much thicker they are than fluke. And there's a lot of meat for not that big of a fish. You get some really nice fillets off these. They definitely seem to be preferring the mussels. This one. Oh, I got a flounder. Oh, we get a double? Double up. Oh no. We got a double ugly. Mother-in-law fish, a lot of guys call it. <laughs> All the guys from uh, New York and Jersey, they go, oh, another mother-in-law. The scalping. Uh, my mother-in-law doesn't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried eating one? No. No, me neither. Well, we were cutting them the other day, and we were cutting them Yeah, like it looks like they'd back, be like a nice know? little But like, I always section. show people that. Yeah, right. I do not like that. No. Oh, yeah. That's bad. Yeah. A lot of times they'll suck the muscle off like so easily, and then the clams not doesn't More come durable. off as easy. You know? Yeah. You get two or three swings on them before they pick the clam. I get all these clams salted. I buy them and then I salt them, so they're like. Yeah. Uh, no, I buy I buy them whole, live whole. Yeah, yeah totes and I sit on the back of the boat one day and just shuck them all and I'll save all like the guts and muscles for like chum and stuff. So the hits with these fish can be very subtle. Um, a lot of times you don't even know they're there so you just keep picking it up, dropping it back down. I try not to move the sinker a whole lot. There's one. This guy's got some weight to him. Another nice flounder. So right here in the first drift, this is my third fish, and certainly not non-stop action, but it's a real steady pick, and uh, certainly plenty of these fish down in the bottom. So the size limit is 12 inches. This guy is well over that. Bag limit is eight fish per angler. We're actually gonna try not to keep them all today, let a few go, keep this fishery going. Um, we've kind of done a self-imposed, we're gonna do a five or six fish per person, let the rest go. <laughs> yeah, try to bet. Try to stun it. Oh, oh <laughs> boo! Oh, don't, don't get <laughs> boo! You lost the state record flounder. <laughs> Next time I'll grab the net. Oh, disaster. Little pinhead. <laughs> that was on me. That's a party foul. I bumped the side of the yeah. boat with him. <laughs> that was his first one too. He's never Poor gone. guy. Poor guy. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's the right guy. Oh, guy. look who's on. World record sculpting. That looks like a big one. No, no, you got one. Oh no, no net. <laughs> I'll redeem I himself. Be that guy. We'll catch it when it falls off. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we have on yes. the waters Matt Hefner yes. with his very first flounder of his life, if he can get it in the boat. Oh, <laughs> on the board. Nice fish too. He broke the ice. Congratulations, Matt, on your first flounder. So these are not necessarily the best fighting fish. 
Um, they're small, but w what they lack for in spirit in the fight, they make they make up for with their tastiness. Like I said, one of my favorite eating fish. This guy's probably legal, but we're gonna actually tag this guy. Captain Mike's getting the tag ready. We're gonna put this in a bucket of water. We'll measure him, put him on the scale. So he's 12 and a half inches. It's probably about a half a pound, usually about point, point 0.5, half a pound here. Called it. Tyler, you hold him for a sec. Basically, we got these simple tags here. Doesn't hurt the fish at all. Uh, send them back down. I love how they scoot when they hit the water like yeah. that. Yeah, so basically I just fill out this now with my name. I got my tag number, where it was released, my address, and then I'll fill out the length here, which was 12 and a half inches, and the weight was half a pound. And then I mail this in to a littoral society. When someone catches it, they reach out to me, give me the information, see how much it grew, where it traveled. I love the basket with the... Uh... Yeah, that's my little. And then like on the way in, my favorite thing to do is like clean everything up. He gets them cut. And I throw all the fillets in the basket and run the hose through them and just let that them walk. Yeah. I love that. It's great to see that you bleed them out like that. Yeah. I think it makes a big difference in the, oh, quality, the quality of the meat. the quality of the meat is 10, they, 10 times better. You fillet than, them, they're you know, white as snow. You no know, beautiful fillets, no we, blood. Once we get them all bled out, they go right into the ice. Salt yep. water, ice brine, and it, they get so cold, you can barely stick your hand in there. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, I think it's also the ethical thing to do. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's like you see so many guys just catch a fish, throw it in a cooler. You know, the thing quick. suffers, it yeah. dies, yeah. the meat, you know, degrades when when they die slowly like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, quick so and easy. And pretty much any fish I see. Less stress on the meat. I like to know? bleed out. It's like anything, less stress on what you're eating. Right. You, know? you don't get that build of lactic acid in yep. the fillets. All right, we had a great morning out in Cape Cod Bay. Got a whole mess of winter flounder. Now I'm gonna show you one of my all-time preparations for cooking these fish. I learned this recipe from a gentleman named Matt Ryan, not the Matt Ryan we fished with today. This is a different person. This Matt Ryan used to be a chef at Leo Seafoods, and he's now uh, working for Weano Oysters, where his father, Dave Ryan, runs the operations there. It's in Barnstable Harbor. Um, we're going to make an apple and corn stuffed flounder and we're going to serve this over a parsnip puree. One of my favorites. All right, we're going to start with the parsnip puree. And parsnips, I think, are a very underutilized root vegetable. They really have a unique flavor. And this puree is my all time favorite way to use them. I'm just going to coarse chop these. Not to be too particular where they're chopping. And we're just going to cover these with half and half until they're just barely all the way covered. I'm going to bring the cream just to a simmer. Once it's heated all the way through, we're going to turn this down to low heat. I'm going to be serving this with a nice green salad on the side. Welcome to my lettuce patch. And I start my lettuce early in the season, generally in March. It really doesn't like warm weather. A lot of people start it way too late. Really by the mid-June, lettuce growing season is over. This nice arugula here, which is actually almost at the end of its growing season. They have over 20 different varieties going this year. A couple of these, a few of those, a couple more of this. There's some baby kale leaves in there, a little spinach. I like to use a lot of edible flowers too. This is a marigold, very edible, nice taste and texture to it. I'm also going to add some pansies, another edible flower. A lot of people don't realize that. Had a nice touch of color to a salad. Be about enough. Look at that, it's gorgeous. All right, now we're gonna get started on our apple and corn stuffing. We have one whole onion here. Add some olive oil. We're gonna cook the onion down for about five minutes until it just starts to soften up. Albie, chicken. Good boy. 
We're gonna use some fresh corn. Just cut it off the cob. And we're gonna add two apples. Onions are starting to soften. And one big clove of garlic here. Now we're gonna add the corn and the apple. And we're gonna cook this until the apple just starts to break down. Maybe about another four or five minutes. Then we're gonna add some fresh breadcrumbs to this. I like to use English muffins. They have a nice crumb to them. Now one English muffin usually works out to about one cup of crumbs. And one thing that Matt Ryan's recipe that he gave me did not include was chorizo, but anytime you put sausage in something, it's gonna make it better. So I'm gonna add uh, probably about a third of a pound of ground chorizo to the pan. And chorizo is already pre-cooked, so we don't need, we need to worry about cooking this for too long. So we're gonna break it up, get some of that flavor going around. We're gonna chop up a little bit of dill and some parsley. Add that to the stuffing, add a little color to it. Now we add our herbs and our breadcrumbs. Butter makes everything better. I'm just gonna hit that with a little bit of salt. Once that butter melts down, we'll taste it and see if it needs any more. I'm just gonna check this stuffing, see if it needs any more salt. Just a touch more salt. Nice, oh, tasty. It's got a little heat in the chorizo. Okay, we got a lovely big old bay of winter flounder fillets. The bloody bad boys out. I always like to dry them off really well with paper towels. Still some bones in here, so we're gonna trim those out. Nothing worse than getting a bone when you're eating fish. And there's also in these fillets a small row of pin bones right down the center. So what I'm gonna do is cut these in half lengthwise. And I'll discard that middle row where the bones were. What do you good boy, sit? You like sushi? Good boy. Nom, 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 nom. We're gonna season the fish with some salt and pepper. All right, now it's time to puree some parsnips. We're gonna add these to the food processor. In order to do it, add this back into our pot. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of butter to that. A little bit of salt. I'm gonna we'll throw this back on the oven on low heat just to keep it warm. Sounds like the eaters are here. Dogs are going crazy. Beer he is, nice, I like beer. Cheers. Oh, we get more eaters. No biting. No. <laughs> All right, now it's time to stuff our flounder. I got a sheet pan here and just gonna hit it with some cooking oil. And there's two sides of the fillet. I usually will, this is the skin side. This is the inside that's closest to the rack. I like to serve this side on the outside. That's the presentation side. Now you can certainly do this with a whole fillet too. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna toothpick that together. We're gonna make one nice little dam there for our stuffing. Scoop it in. All right, now we're gonna fire these into a preheated 425 degree oven. And these are probably gonna take about 10 to 12 minutes to cook. Stir in that butter. We're gonna plate our parsley puree. Make that as pretty as we can. So our fish has been baking for about 12 minutes now. And this should be done, these ways are thin. Check the temperature, 137, 138. If I let these just sit here for two more minutes, they'll come up to 145, which is our ideal temperature for a flounder. Anyway, while those are resting, I will dress our salad. Got a nice homemade honey mustard vinaigrette. I'm gonna plate our fish right on top of that parsnip puree. Lemon. And then last but not least, our gorgeous salad. All right, let's get our eaters in here. All right, ding, ding, ding. 
Come and get it. <laughs>